viewers, a very good evening. This is the news on Sunset Television and I'm Rashika. We get you detailed news wrap of the day's top national and international updates. First, the headlines of the day. Campaigning continues for first phase elections in Gujarat. Prime Minister Modi addresses rallies in Mehsana, Dahod, Badodra and Bhavnagar. At the 9th ASEAN Defence Minister's meeting in Siam Reap, Cambodia, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh lays stress on independent, open and inclusive system in the Indo-Pacific region. Cher Bahadur Deoba registers victory for the seventh time in Nepal. Nepali Congress party leading by winning 13 seats so far, counting awards continues. Mercury drops below zero in many areas of Jammu and Kashmir. Snowfall in hill state triggers cold wave in plains. And in the FIFA World Cup, Morocco-Croatia match ends in a draw. Japan scores upset, beats Germany 2-1. A quick look now at today's important news in our flash segment. Pre-launch celebration of International Year of Millets on 24th November in New Delhi. External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar and Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar to attend the event. UNICEF and National Film Development Corporation join hands to promote films with a child rights perspective at the 53rd International Film Festival of India in Goa. Foreign Minister S. Jaishankar meets Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister for Political Affairs, Bhageri Kani in New Delhi, holds talks on bilateral cooperation, regional issues and joint comprehensive plan of action. President Draupadi Murmu pays homage to Guru Tegh Bahadur on eve of his martyrdom day says Guru Tegh Bahadur sacrificed his life for dharma. Jail Delhi Minister Satyendra Jain to get proper food, confirming to his religious beliefs, rules a city court. Government notifies inclusion of coronary stents in national list of essential medicines. Decision to help these life-saving medical devices make more affordable. A 5.9 magnitude earthquake hits western Turkey. Tremors also felt in capital Ankara. 50 people injured. US Supreme Court clears way for former President Donald Trump's tax forms to be released to a Democratic-controlled Congressional Committee. UK Supreme Court rules against Scottish independence referendum plan says it cannot go ahead without the approval of the UK Parliament. Surya Kumar Yadav consolidates position at the top of ICC T20 international rankings. Ashdeep Singh and Yujvendra Chahel make gains in bowling. And time now to look at the latest from the pole-bound state of Gujarat. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held four election rallies in Gujarat today in Mehsana, Dahod, Vadodra and Bhavnagar. Addressing the people in Mehsana in North Gujarat, Prime Minister Modi said the BJP has worked substantially for development of the state in the past 20 years. Prime Minister Modi said that the BJP model can only ensure the growth and prosperity of Gujarat in the next 25 years. Targeting the Congress, Prime Minister said that the Congress model meant nepotism, casteism, sectarianism and vote bank politics. In the 20th century, Gujarat has changed the city of Gujarat. In the 20th century, the whole of Gujarat has changed the GSDP of the government of the government of 1,000,000,000 crore rupees. Today, the government Addressing a rally in Vadodra, Prime Minister said that the BJP changed the face of the state by bringing about development in every field. He asserted that for the BJP, the country is always bigger than a person or a party. 
He also said that the party is focusing on the empowerment of each and every section of the society. प्रधानमंत्री किसान ने सम्मान निधि ना सीधा पैसा जाए अने ऐनी जिंदगी में तकलीफ ना पड़े नहीं चिंता Prime Minister Modi also addressed the Vijay Sankalp rally in Dahod in Gujarat remembering the tribal social reformer Govind Guru Prime Minister said that he inspires patriotism from generation to generation he said that even after 75 years the congress never thought of making a tribal the president he added that the BJP gave a message to the world by giving India a woman tribal president for the first time. With the election just around the corner, campaigning has gained momentum in Gujarat. BJP President J.P. Nadda addressed a public rally in Botad in the state. He highlighted the achievements of the BJP government in the state. Addressing a public meeting in just that in Rajkot, Union Home Minister Amit Shah said that the BJP has done unprecedented work to raise the standard of living of the poor and backward classes of Gujarat. He said that the people of Gujarat will ensure a resounding victory for the BJP. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath addressed a public meeting in Kutch. He said that Gujarat is scripting a new story of development. Gujarat Chief Minister Bupendra Patel also addressed several rallies and appealed to the people to vote for the BJP. Now, other news in detail. India called for a free, open, inclusive and rules-based Indo-Pacific based upon respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all nations. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh highlighted this at the 9th ASEAN Defence Minister's meeting at Siam Reap in Cambodia. He stated that India is concerned about complicating actions and incidents that have eroded trust and undermined peace and stability in the region. He also suggested the need for India and ASEAN to work together for maritime security in the region. The Defence Minister stressed that India stands for the freedom of navigation and overflight, peaceful settlement of maritime disputes and adhere to international law. Rajnath Singh also held a bilateral meeting with US Secretary of Defence Lloyd Austin in Cambodia on the sidelines of the ASEAN summit. The two leaders discussed a wide range of issues of mutual interest while expressing their commitment to a strong India-US defence cooperation. Singh emphasized the need for both countries to work together for capacity building in critical domains such as military aviation, artificial intelligence and cyber technology. Most parts of the Kashmir Valley recorded sub-zero night temperatures last night. The meteorological department has forecast dry weather and colder nights till the end of this month. Except Kokir Nag in South Kashmir, temperatures across the valley settled below the freezing point on Tuesday night. Srinagar too experienced sub-zero night temperature for the first time this season. Gulmarg in North Kashmir's Baramulla district recorded minus 3.8 degrees Celsius, while Pahalgam reeled at minus 4.8 degrees Celsius. Leh down in Ladakh recorded a low of minus 9.6 degrees Celsius, while the minimum in Dras was minus 13.5 degrees Celsius. The Met Office said that the mercury is expected to dip further. And now look at some other news across the nation. Talks on a free trade agreement between India and the Gulf Corporation Council will begin on November 24th. The GCC is a, non, is a confederation of six countries in the Gulf region. Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Kuwait, Oman and Bahrain. India's exports to the GCC member countries grew by 58.26% to about $44 billion in 2021-22 as against $27.8 billion in 2020-21 according to the data from the Commerce Ministry. India-Uganda reviewed the entire gamut of bilateral relations including economic, defence, trade, investment development, collaboration, capacity building, scholarship programs, and discussed expanding cooperation in areas such as health, agro-processing, renewable energy. 
Both delegations also exchange views on regional and multilateral issues, including cooperation in UN, International Solar Alliance, and other multilateral forums. The President, Vice President, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have wished Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla on his birthday. The Prime Minister appreciated his efforts to further strengthen parliamentary democracy. The PM, in his greetings, also admired Lok Sabha Speaker's rich intellect and constitutional knowledge. Successive governments have completely destroyed the independence of the Election Commission of India by ensuring no chief election commissioner gets the full six-year term to head the poll body since 1996, a constitutional bench in the Supreme Court lamented Tuesday, adding the absence of a law for appointment of election commissioner has resulted in an alarming trend. Now time for a short break. Stay tuned for more news on the other side. I think the highest have it. How are the Highest have it. The bill is passed. Back to the news. Let's now take a look at all the latest from the Russia-Ukraine crisis. In today's Russia-Ukraine news, Ukraine is setting up thousands of invincibility centers to provide free electricity, heat, water, internet service, mobile phone connections and a pharmacy round the clock. President Volodymyr Zelensky said that people needing basic services if Russian strikes knock out power stations and other facilities this winter. He said that more than 4,000 centers have already been set up, with more being planned. Russian attacks have knocked out power for long periods to up to 10 million consumers at a time. At least one person was killed and three others injured by Russian shelling in Kherson in the last 24 hours. With no power and water supply, the city is struggling to provide medical facilities to the injured in strikes. Doctors are working in the dark, unable to use elevators to transport patients to surgery and operating with headlamps, cell phones and flashlights. In some hospitals, key equipment is not working without electricity. A newborn was killed as Russian rockets slammed into the maternity ward of a hospital overnight in Wilnyanks in the Zaporizhia region, images show thick smoke rising above the mounds of rubble as emergency workers comb through the site against the backdrop of a dark night sky. Ukrainian emergency services later reported that a woman in labor and a doctor had been rescued from the ruined building. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has welcomed a new round of funding from the US and the European Union totaling more than 7 billion US dollars combined. He said that the package from Brussels supplied 2.5 billion euros or 2.576 billion US dollars, while 4.5 billion US dollars package from Washington was coming soon. Zelensky also praised his nation soldiers and the ongoing shelling in the Donetsk and Luhansk region with progress being made little by little in the latter. Just over one week after being retaken by Ukrainian forces, the city of Kherson has begun to replace the Russian propaganda billboards left by its former occupiers. 
While many of them ex expound the benefits of receiving a Russian passport, others advise locals to sign up for the Russian pension system or vote yes to be annexed by Putin's administration. The local Ukrainian government is replacing them with their own posters featuring slogans like Kherson Hero City and Compatriots, You Are Free. Ukrainian officials on Tuesday handed over the bodies of 33 soldiers recovered from Russia to their families. The bodies of Russian servicemen were sent from a special storage facility in Kharkiv to be exchanged for the bodies of Ukrainian servicemen. Now time to look at some more news from other parts of the globe. The UK Supreme Court ruled on Wednesday that Scotland does not have the power to hold a new referendum on independence without the consent of the British government. The judgment is a setback for the Scottish government's campaign to break away from the United Kingdom. The semi-autonomous Scottish government wants to hold a referendum next October with the question, should Scotland be an independent country? The UK government in London refuses to approve a vote, saying the question was settled in 2014 referendum that saw Scottish voters reject independence by a margin of 55% to 45%. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday rejected the opposition's demand for early parliamentary elections and vowed to use the military to crush any future anti-government protest aimed at regime change. Here are the details. Ranil Vikramasinghe took over as the Sri Lankan president in July after the then-president Gotabia Rajapaksha fled Colombo in the face of country's worst economic crisis since 1948. He has made a mandate to serve out the rest of the Rajapaksha's term that ends in the November 2024. But opposition parties are demanding early parliamentary elections, claiming that Vikramasinghe government lacks electoral credibility. The next presidential election is scheduled to be held in 2024. Sri Lanka witnessed its worst economic crisis since early this year, with running out of reserve to pay for imports. In mid-April, it declared its first ever sovereign debt default before approaching the IMF for the bailout facility. The island nation survived with essential supplies being made available with Indian assistance over $4 billion. Vikramasinghe faced criticism for ordering the crackdown on protesters and detaining at least two of them under the Draconian Prevention of Terrorism Act. On Wednesday, he said that even if the protesters call him a dictator, they would need to obtain police permission to stage street protests. Vikramasinghe alleged that a radical political party, Frontline Socialist Party, was behind the street protest to achieve their political aims. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Seven people were killed and several wounded in a shooting at a Walmart in Chesapeake in Virginia on Tuesday night. The mass killing comes just days after a gunman killed five and injured 17 at a Colorado LGBTQ nightclub. More details in this report. A gunman shot and killed six people in a Walmart store late on Tuesday in the U.S. state of Virginia. The shooter was among the dead, officials said. Officers responded to a report of a shooting at the Walmart on Sam's Circle in the city of Chesapeake around 10.15 p.m. Police said the shooting stopped when they arrived. The incident in Chesapeake comes just before the Thanksgiving holiday. Walmart is the largest retailer in the United States. Over 600 mass shootings have taken place so far in the country this year. The shooting came three days after a person opened fire at a gay night club in Colorado late on Saturday, killing five people and wounding 17. Earlier in the year, the country was shaken by the deaths of 21 when a gunman stormed an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. Tuesday's shooting also brought back memories of another at a Walmart in 2019 when a gunman allegedly targeting Mexicans opened fire at a store in El Paso and killed 22 people. Piro Report, Sunset TV. Hundreds of workers joined protest at Foxconn's flagship iPhone plant in China, with some men smashing surveillance cameras and windows. 
The scenes of open dissent in China mark an escalation of unrest at the massive factory in Zhongzhou city, highlighting inept handling of the situation by the world's largest contract manufacturer. Take a look. Employees at the world's biggest Apple iPhone factory have been beaten and detained in protests over contract disputes amid antivirus controls. Videos posted on Chinese social media on Wednesday showed thousands of people in mass facing rows of police in white protective suits with plastic riot shields. They were reportedly filmed at the factory in the central city of Jiangzhou. One person was hit in the head with a club and another was taken away with his arms held behind his back. Social media postings claimed they were protesting unspecified contract violations. Factory operator Foxconn Technology Group had said earlier that it was using closed-loop management. This refers to employees living at their workplace with no outside contact. Last month, thousands of employees staged a walkout over complaints about inadequate antivirus protection and a lack of help for co-workers who fell ill. Apple has said that deliveries of its new iPhone 14 model will be delayed due to anti-disease controls imposed on the Jiangzhou factory. The city government suspended access to an industrial zone that surrounds the factory, which Foxconn has said employs 2 lakh people. Foxconn is headquartered in Taipei in Taiwan. Agency reports also said that the ruling Communist Party had ordered grassroots cadres to fill in for Foxconn employees in Zhangzhou who left. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Time for news from some other parts of the world. Nepal Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoga was elected on Wednesday with a huge margin of votes for the House of Representatives for the seventh time in a row. His ruling Nepali Congress party is leading in the election tally by winning 13 seats so far. Elections to the House of Representatives and seven provisional assemblies were held on Sunday. Drone footage showed collapsed homes and earthquake damage as the number of deaths from a 5.6 magnitude earthquake in Indonesia rose to more than 268. Hundreds of people have been injured and 22,000 houses have been damaged in the tremor that hit a populous West Java province on Monday. The most substantial damage was in the town of Sianjur. At least one village was buried under a landslide. Malaysia's king met with lawmakers on Wednesday and will next consult other royal families in a continuing search for a prime minister after inconclusive general elections that saw the rise of Islamist sparked anxieties in the multilateral nation. Opposition leaders Anwar Ibrahim, Pakatan Harappan or Alliance of Hope topped Saturday's poll with 82 parliamentary seats but failed to reach 112 needed for majority. Former Prime Minister Moyadin's Malay-centric Perikatan National or National Alliance won 73 seats. The Pakistan Army has submitted the names of six of its top generals for the post of Army Chief to succeed incompetent General Kamar Javed Bajwa, ending the suspense over the key appointment. General Bajwa, 61, is scheduled to retire on 29 November after a three-year extension. He has ruled out seeking another extension. The Prime Minister's office issued a brief statement on Twitter that it received the summary from the Ministry of Defence for the appointment of the new Chief of Army Staff. Two blasts went off near bus stops in Jerusalem on Wednesday, killing one person and injuring at least 14 in what police said were suspected attacks by Palestinians. The first explosion occurred near a bus stop on the edge of the city, where commuters usually crowd waiting for buses. The second went off in Ramat, a neighbourhood in the city's north. And time now for a quick sports update with focus on the FIFA World Cup 2022. Bangladesh's cricket board moves a one-day international against India next month from Dhaka after the country's opposition announced plans for a protest that could paralyse the capital the same day. Series in Bangladesh begins December 4. 
The Supreme Court today said that on December 6, it will hear on a plea related to the All India Football Federation and objections related to the draft constitution for the sports body. In another FIFA World Cup upset, Japan defeated four times champion Germany 2 1. Germany led in the first half. Two goals in the 75th and 83rd minute, however, gave Japan a deserved victory. In a setback to 2018 runners up Croatia, their Group F match against Morocco ended in a goal less draw. In a Group E match beginning in a short while, 2010 champion Spain are to take on Costa Rica. The defence strategy of the lowest ranked team in Group E can frustrate Spain. In a match played late last night, France began their title defence of the FIFA World Cup, beating Australia 4 1. In an emphatic display, Olivier Giraud scored 2 2 equal. Thierry Henry as France's highest goal scorer. That is a wrap of the bulletin. Keep watching Sunset Television for more updates. Thank you. Good night.